Hello everybody, this is Adam from Wheel Guns for Wheelmen, and Happy New Year. I got for Christmas a new toy, and that toy is another Charter Arms Revolver. Yeah, two Charter Arms Revolvers over the course of like 45 days or so. And do I have a problem? Yes, yes I do. Uh, but I wanted to just do initial impressions of this Charter Arms Revolver now that I've taken it out twice. Uh, there's a short of me shooting it on, I think, the day before Christmas, or maybe the day before that, uh, when I actually took it out for the first time. I didn't actually get it on Christmas Day, but it was for Christmas. Uh, and so I took it out, shot it down in Utah at a gun range. I only shot it five times because I don't have much 38 Special laying around. I know, weird for a, a wheel gunner not to have much, but I find 38 Special to be somewhat boring because I'm a hipster. I like weird things, 32 caliber things, 44 caliber things, but uh, not 38. Now, it comes in similar case to the last one. Hard plastic works okay. Can't complain. Better than a box. And it is empty as you can see. And the reason I had to have this, it's a little snub nose 38. Uh, the reason I had to have it is because of the high polished stainless steel finish that Charter Arms does. It's so shiny. I am like a dragon. I love shiny things, baubles, jewels. If it were up to me, I'd have a layer and I'd just sleep on top of a bunch of shiny things. Uh, but um, I had to have it for that reason. Also, I liked the grips. It's hard to see, but they're... Their texture of these little bumps, a little squishy, but pr mostly firm. Has a metal back strap, which not very pleasant. It's not a very pleasant gun to shoot. Uh, but if you've watched a short that I filmed, you'll see that if you have good technique, um, you can control it relatively well with 38 special loads. Um, it says not to put plus P through it. Uh, it says that it's not really beneficial and will put wear and tear on the gun. I don't think it would blow up and injure you, but I wouldn't do it if the manufacturer is not suggesting it. Especially since, again, they're right, it's really not necessary at 1.75 inches to have plus P pressures. Uh, and so low recoiling 38 special loads will A, feel better, and B, it'll be fine for self-defense at close range, which is what this is for. Now, it's hammerless, one of the things that drew me to it. I've never owned a hammerless revolver. Clearly there is a hammer, it's just completely concealed within the frame. Um, but you can put this in a, in a jacket pocket, and you could actually shoot it in the jacket pocket, and you just pull the trigger, and there's no slide to reciprocating it caught up in the material. There's no hammer even to get caught up in the, in the material of the jacket pocket. So you could do that, which is nice. Now I'm, I have a pocket holster that I'm using for it for now, and I have carried it once. Um, after my second range trip, I carried it in my pocket. It was comfortable in a cargo pants pocket, not a jacket pocket, but you could easily have put it in a jacket pocket. Now, one thing that really that I really like about this that I I want to point out is this piece right here. This this shroud for the ejector rod. And that is nice because you don't damage this flimsy-ish piece, which is flimsy on all revolvers. I'm not saying this one is flimsier than normal, but this ejector rod piece uh, fits into this shroud so it can't get bent. Now, old charter arms, you know, under covers did not have this. Uh, modern ones may, yeah. And then they have the sub-models of the undercover, including this double action only. You know concealed hammer version this is called the off duty uh, but really it's just a variant of the undercover from what I can tell now in my last video I said that these are knockoff Smith & Wessons because I noticed that they were similar in dimensions and would fit similar holsters they're they're J-frame uh, and the cylinder release latch you push forward to pop it out and so to me it was much with Smith & Wesson, but people pointed out that the cylinder rotates in a different direction. I looked up some uh, gunsmithing videos internally 
uh, some of the linkage uh, internally that makes the, you know, that governs the timing. It's different. It's theoretically improved and it will be less likely to get off on its timing. Won't have as many timing issues. It also has a transfer bar style safety instead of, um, I believe Smith & Wesson has a hammer block safety. Someone moves up, has a piece that moves up in front of the hammer in order to allow it to make contact. The other one um, has a piece that moves away to allow the hammer to make contact. So they're different uh, mechanically. But the feel of it is similar to a Smith & Wesson J-frame. And I like the fact that it has the ejector rod shroud because uh, the, the newer Smith & Wessons, a lot of them don't. And they're more expensive. And also, a lot of the newer Smith & Wesson guns, uh, ones I've handled and also just ones I've seen on YouTube, they have had quality control issues. Uh, this one, so far, nothing really has stood out. There is one thing which is in the picture to the video. And that is, um, out of the 25 rounds I put through this, the 13th or 14th round uh, had a light primer strike. But uh, I threw it back in and, you know, I pulled the trigger and it, it went bang the second time around. Is it the ammo? I'm not sure. I've only put 25 rounds of the same exact ammo from the same exact box through this. It was a PPU handgun line. Could be just that PPU has harder primers or something, I have no idea. Uh, but I'm gonna put, before I start carrying this on a more frequent basis, I just carried it that one time just to test out the holster and the gun and see if it was comfortable. But if I actually start wanting to carry this seriously, I'm going to run at least 100 rounds of FMJ through it from two different brands and make sure that it functions flawlessly with all 50 rounds of each. And then I'll put probably 15 rounds of whatever little recoil Back to the hollow points I choose to carry in it. And if it works well with that, I'll probably start carrying it more. I'll continue to function check it, so to speak, and take it out. And ideally get about 500 rounds through it before I start carrying it a lot. But so far, I really like it. It only weighs 12 ounces, very lightweight. The grip fits my hand really well. I also have small hands, but you know I can easily get all my fingers on it, a lot of surface area. Also, a plus that I've noticed to having the hammer completely concealed is normally I just hold a revolver like this so that this thumbs out of the way of the hammer. However, that doesn't really do much in terms of, of grip or controllability or keeping the muzzle flip down. Uh, I noticed that on these, I can actually keep my thumb this hand I can keep higher, and this thumb I can actually keep on the above where the hammer is, on that part of the frame, and I can squeeze off shots and like do rap, you know, more rapid follow-up shots. Anyways, um, it's nice, it's shiny, it's comfortable. It's a little stout on the recoil, but that's how these lightweight thirty eights are. Uh, it's not bad by any means. If you're, if you're a new shooter, I would not buy this as your first gun, or if you are an older person or have arthritis, also not a good gun. But I really like it. I, I like it. I like it aesthetically. You know, the black with the high polish finish, you know, two-tone. Uh, and I also like the fact that I now have a lightweight, easy-to-conceal five-shot 38 special that won't snag. Uh, you know, the hammer won't snag because the hammer's concealed. And so right now, initial impressions are this is a good gun and going to keep putting rounds through it. Hopefully we don't have any more light primer strikes or anything else uh, that would go wrong and I will start carrying it more often. Please like and subscribe. Leave any comments about things you'd like to see. If you want me to do anything specifically with this gun, any sort of tests. If you want to see any specific 38 Special Ammo tested out, just leave it in the comments. Thank you.